You know, I'm a tiger. I'm a glass artist. I specialize in film form and film cast of glass. I'm inspired by nature. I love to hike and bike and kayak, and I find my inspiration on all those adventures that I take. I got started, I made this list of things I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn some new creative mediums, and we had collected a lot of glass art on our travels over the years. And so I went and took a class to learn how it was made, and I got hooked. And I just kept taking classes until I finally started going around the world to learn from some of the most well-known glass artists in the nation. One of them is putting together different colors and combinations and then uh, letting it flow in the kiln and when the kiln gets up to about 1700 degrees I open the kiln, properly attired, and I move the glass around to create swirls and flow and you know, get the design that I want out of the glass. The other technique I like is called kiln casting. There I make a mold and I mix the glass it creates an effect and the mold essentially is a one-time mold. So I cast it and then after that I do a lot of cold working to get these more 3D shapes. With nature, it's on fire with sunsets and sunrises and just the beauty of the colors in the fall and they're all very vibrant and colorful. And then you take a kiln which can heat up and manipulate glass in various ways. And so for me in this particular collection, I combined my love for flow and heat of the kiln with the casting of butterflies and ladybugs and bees, as well as flowers. The background is made by me putting it in this particular piece, mostly yellows, whites, and a few other colors. And lining them up such that they flow into the base and then I get in the kiln to 1700 degrees and move it around to create those swirls to resemble a bloom of a flower. To make the butterflies and the bees and the ladybugs, I make molds and then I cast glass into those uh, to create the colors and everything that I want. And then it goes into the kiln and when it comes back out, I have to break the, the mold off of the glass and then do cold working to make it shiny and put it back in the kiln for a fire polish. So to make these particular patterns, I actually flow the glass into a thick shaped dam and it becomes very, very thick and big. And then after it's formed in the kiln, I, but again, I manipulate to get the swirls and the colors, but then when it comes out of the kiln really thick and big, I take it to a tile saw and slice it up very, you know, across that. And then as you lay down each one, they match up pattern-wise, and then I figure out what it should be once I see those patterns. This stand is a, a steel stand that is made by an artist in Maryland. And, uh, you know, he makes it whatever size I request. And, uh, I usually ask him to make some kind of unique swirl to make it mine. Uh, but he had to have shoulder surgery a couple of years ago, and I was faced with what am I going to do? And I spent some time contemplating how could I make my own stands? And that's when the glass stands came to be. The way I make them is I lay it out. I have to put fiber paper in the center to the size I want it to be. A lot of measuring to make sure I can get it to balance. And then I put it in a kiln, keeping an opening for the glass. And when it comes out, I make sure it's going to fit perfectly with the art, and I can do some cold work to make that happen. And then I do a kiln forming over a mold to create the shape, the height or, that I want. So you can tell they're all different heights depending on how I want that to turn out. In my uh, determination to figure out how I wanted to hang glass art on the wall at galleries who require you to have a wire, uh, I was looking for different options. I can frame the glass, but to me it limited me because as you can tell, I like to do not normal shapes of my glass. And I came across an artist, a metal artist, who was able to make this brush stainless steel, and she welds. And so we came up with a system 
in which he welds these cleats on the back. And what that does is it allows the art to lay flat on the wall. There's no um, tilting of the art when it's done. I can then wire it in the back for the galleries. And then I can either silicone the glass directly to the art like this piece is, or in these other pieces, I can use standoffs in which to allow the reflections of the glass to shine through. So for the both on my sculptures and on the wall art, I use standoffs. So I glue a piece with two-part epoxy that's made very specifically for glass and is intended to actually be on the wall if you want it to hang screwed on the wall, but it also makes these nesting ones that I use glass to glass. So one piece is on this glass, one piece is on that glass, and it just slides into place. And that allows it to not only stand away from the background, but also to create reflections from that stand off in the back, but also as you're transporting or shipping or moving around the art, you don't have to worry about these parts that are sticking out because they come off, and then you put them on once you have it where you want. Sometimes I use rare earth magnets, especially for the smaller pieces. Their rare earth magnets are very, very magnetic, and they really stick well. And the benefit of that is there's the ability to have a little more creativity on the angle you want the art to show. These techniques are a little bit different. I actually take and grind up glass very fine to the consistency of sand, very, very fine uh, ground up glass, and I mix it with a medium, and then I essentially pour it over the glass, so it's because it's now liquid, and then I let it dry just a little bit, and then I use guide oil, and I drop it in places to create the cracks. There's only a little bit of the cracks, it's more flowery, by then, and then I put it in the kiln, and the kiln makes, depending on the temperature I use, it continues to make those cracks to create that interest in the glass. When I make the trees, first I create the background, and I fuse that so it's smooth and rounded edges, and then I create the teach tree trunk and the branches by cut pieces of glass, and then I'll attack fuse that just so they're lightly attached. And then all these little additions are different layers of me breaking glass down into little bits of different sizes to create the texture and building that texture up with multiple firings in the kiln until I get the depth I want. And there's this interesting rocks that I put on here, and these are glass, but I actually, when I grind my glass in the grinder, I get the glass dust build up in that, and I scrape that up, and because it's mixed with lots of different colors, it turns brown and I can create rocks. Thank you for listening. You can come by the gallery here at Kansas City Artist Coalition at 32nd and Gillum from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday. You can also visit the website at kansascityartistcoalition.org where you can shop online.